Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen video and in this video we're going to look at using Vital and the three oscillators plus some of the LFOs to create some arpeggios and some patterns and we're also going to import some samples as well to create some unique wavetables. And before we get started, do not worry, Trance is here to stay. I am just expanding and broadening the horizons of the Demis Helen channel and community. So watch this space. There's going to be plenty of extra content coming here in regards to outside of the trance genre. And as usual, if you have any questions about the video or anything that you want to add to the video, let me know down in the comments. I do get back to everybody, so it'd be interesting to see what feedback we get from this video. And I'd like to welcome all the new people here. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you get to see more videos like this in the future. Okay, so here we are in Vital. I already created this once, but I forgot to hit record, so I spent a whole hour setting this recording up for no reason at all, but that's plenty of practice to get started on this one. So I've already got the sequence here I'm going to paste into LFO1, and I'll explain that in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an arpeggio, and we're going to have sort of a really thick unison bass that's going to pitch slide and close a filter at the same time. So we're going to use two filters, two oscillators, maybe a third if we want to add an extra layer to our arpeggio, and then finally we're going to hit the effects and create some gnarly stuff in there. So over here that thing that looks a little bit like a stepped pyramid is actually an arpeggiated sequence and that is going to control the pitch of our first oscillator. So how this was set up is the grid is set to 8 and then I set this grid to 12 and that is 12 semitone. So for example if we were hitting C3 this step here at the top is going to be C4. So you can see the steps that it's taking there to get that arpeggiated sequence. I'm going to turn smoothing off so we get a nice steady step because the more smoothing we apply the more smooth that gets and we want it to be arpeggiated and nice and staccato. Drag and drop LFO1 onto our pitch and you can see it's automatically assigned four octaves there and we just want to do one so we right click and enter value hit 12 and now it's controlling just 12 semitones over one octave so now if we hit our key let's just turn this down a little bit it's a little bit stranger things sort of vibe but it's not quite there and that speed is the speed that we're going to be using that, that frequency there and we're going to leave it on trigger mode so every time we hit the trigger it's always going to start from the beginning. If we used to use sync mode that's going to continuously sync through no matter where we press the key and that's going to be really annoying so we want that to trigger at the beginning. Perfect so let's just set our sound up I'm going to put two voices uh, yeah let's have a really thin sound let's bring it down to like two or three just so we've got a little bit of wide panning going on there and now we're going to set up our level so I'm going to bring the level down and you can hear we've got nothing now and I'm going to go to LFO 2 I'm going to leave it on 8 and I'm going to create a series of peaks and you can hear nothing so let's drag this over to the level you can hear what's going on here So these are individual envelopes, just see them as individual envelopes. If you was to bring this down here on the normal envelope, suddenly we have no sound. We need it to be sustained so that we can open these as gates and create sound where we want it to be essentially. We don't want to just have that drop off because that requires each key hit. But when you hold the key, it just fades the volume to zero. So we need that sustained permanently. I'm just going to draw the rest of these triangles in and once you've done this just save these triangles don't draw them in every time especially when you go up to 32 steps it can get a little bit tedious so we can control the length this way and that way so shorter and longer and also these are velocity sensitive obviously because of the level distance that we've set here so we can set that distance to say where it usually is and that will create a nice velocity sensitive sound let's just bring them down so you get the idea there and we could have that one longer
it gets the impression that the louder you go, the longer it is. So you can you can do anything. So experiment with that. I'm going to turn smoothing off so we're not smoothing that sound. A bit later on, we probably will come back to smoothing. And maybe even stereo. That's a really interesting feature, especially when it comes to faster sequences like this. And now with that bit out of the way, we're going to focus on the pitch bend slide and then we'll enhance the entire preset. So turn oscillator one off. I'm going to have 16 voices. I'm going to stick this up to like 30-ish percent. Perfect. And we're going to assign filter one to the ARP and filter two to the bass. So this is already automatically assigned correctly. And I'm going to turn on filter number two. And let's just go to ladder and Let's have a 24 for now. Well, that's roughly the sort of position I want. I'm going to increase the drive here. And what we're going to do is create a pitch slide. So we're going to go from here to here. And that again is a one octave slide, just like we created 12 semitones here. We're just going to create a standard slide with this one. So here we are. I'm going to set this to 16. So you can see two steps. I'm going to create a hold on the bass. So it's going to hold that top note. And it's going to slowly pitch bend down to the octave below. So let's attach LFO3 to here. And right click, enter value. And we're going to say, get rid of that 60 and put 12 again. So now... And I'm going to do this over 8 over 1, so 8 bars. So let's open the filter for a second. We'll just turn the filter off. That's far too slow. I want that to be a lot faster. So I'm going to create a solid curve. So you can see that's two steps of the 16. So by the fourth step, well, the start of the fifth step, we want this curve to have practically ended. So we can sharpen that up or we can control it more by adding another set here, another dot. And you can see that creates a nice tidy curve instead of trying to tighten that up more like that because it only goes so far. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Perfect, that is the slide that I'm looking for. And we're gonna hit the filter again. And also we're gonna create an LFO slide on LFO4. And we're gonna set this here to our filter. And we're gonna create that the same length. It's a little bit too harsh there. So what can we do? I'm going to turn that resonance down and I'm going to make this curve a lot less harsh. And I'm probably going to bring that to end about there and keep that sort of nearly linear. I'm going to bring this down here. too low okay so that is closing the filter and it is going to be 24 on the semitone so we're actually going to be two octaves down essentially on that bit to that bit now there that is a lot meatier that's got a lot more character and texture to it so let's just layer these two up again I'm going to just make that like that. I'm just going to make these less obvious in terms of louder and quieter. So it's just more varied across the board. Okay, so we've got the basic premise of our patch now. Now to make this a little bit more interesting. So I think we should use some FM in this instance. So I'm going to load oscillate three. I'm going to turn two off. So we're just focusing on the ARP. 
bring this down and you can see our level was controlled by LFO2 so I'm going to bring that across and perfect we've got a secondary oscillator running so let's start we're just going to use the initialized saw wave and I think we should start by doing some shaping so I do like using smear it gives it that nice sharp texture before disappearing okay so let's just set that to roughly 12 o'clock and then we'll choose fm from one so fm from oscillator one Okay, and I'm going to send that to filter one, turn on filter one. And let's use LFO5 to create another control for our filter. And we're just going to have one ramp here and we're going to set the frequency to be a bit faster. Bring that across. Let's just have it open a little bit less than that. And let's go for, I think it's going to be one over 16. something new here let's just uh, make some changes to our sound here a little bit just a few tweaks Okay, so that sounds okay. I'm gonna pitch this up and just have a mess around. Let's put it an octave higher. Okay, that, that works. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Uh, let's just bring this down. Increase the smoothing. So I think that's sounding okay, obviously we need some effects to give this a bit of grounding. So let's jump into the effects just for this bit. Now we're going to have some delay and we don't want to include that sort of lower portion of the frequencies so we're going to actually use the spread and cut off to control how much of those lows are in. So I think somewhere like that will be fine. And we're going to set this to probably, should we set it to dotted? I think dotted will do it. Increase the mix. Okay, that gives it that little bit of a weird vibe to it, it more magical, I suppose you could say. For now, I'm just going to attach the mod wheel to the filter to open up filter one for now so we can hear everything on that ARP. Maybe not as far as that. That will do. And we're going to use a compressor and I'm going to put our compressor here at the top so this is the order they're going to go in and we're going to switch this to low band so we can control the low and then just the upper portion of the sound so at the moment sounds a little bit weird and what we're going to do is just balance out bring some of the lows in and just control that top end That's starting to sound a little bit better. We just need to hear that in context with our bass now.
Okay, that sounds okay. That's just giving a little bit of life to the sound. And finally, we'll just put some reverb on. I'm gonna increase the size a little bit. Time, a little bit, somewhere like two to three seconds. And I'm just gonna chop some of the lows out up to about 70-ish hertz. See how much life that brings to the sound straight away. I'm going to set up a couple of macros because I feel like we could make use of two octaves of this arpeggio. So uh, let's put this here and you can see macro one says 36. So I'm just going to say 12. So it's just controlling over one octave and the same. So I was going to say we'll add macro one to this as well, but we're not going to do that because this is the FM channel. So we'll just leave that as it is and see what result we get from just tweaking this macro control here. There, yeah, that is. That's got a nice soft touch to it. That sounds nice. And we can bring down now our mod wheel. Bring up LFO 5 a bit. Add the bass back in. So after hearing that, just one thing that I'd like to add in the effects is a little bit of EQ, and I'm just gonna bring those lows out a little bit to make them deeper. Okay, so let's take this a little bit further and I'm gonna add some randomization to pitch, for example. So if we take the randomizer and add this into our fine pitch here and make bipolar, so it's oscillating either side of the parameter instead of just one direction. Let's make it really obvious here. And let's just change this to Lorenz Attractor. Okay, we'll keep that frequency, but we're gonna turn this down, let's just say, sort of like a two o'clock position. Perfect. So let's add our arpeggiator to oscillator three as well, because we've got this one going, but this one's not actually moving. So if we put this on here, and enter value, I was gonna make that bipolar then, and put 12. Perfect. So you can hear now the delay, the sort of higher octave on the arpeggio just gives it all a little bit more atmosphere. So let's look at making this a little bit softer on here. You can see smoothing is off at the moment. We could control smoothing with macro two, and let's just say it starts here and works its way back around so it's soft to sharp. And we can call that ARP smooth for now, even though we're not going to be able to see all of that. ARP smoot, so let's call it ARP smooth like that. And I just wanna add in here, I do encourage macros to be assigned to multiple parameters because that's what they're there for, that's what they're designed for. So you can control multiple parameters that you physically couldn't do with your hands just using a standard controller, for example. So we'll control macro three, let's say we'll control the unison spread control here and say we're gonna make it narrow as we increase macro three.
So you can see that's more of a center frequency there. Sort of wide. And at the same time, we could reduce the spread. Yes, yeah, so we get a really sort of down and personal bass there now. And we can name that one bass width. I'm just making sure I remembered what that was. That is your ARP octave. That is our ARP smoothing, our bass width. And I think our final one, maybe just make some adjustments to the filter with this one and then yeah, we'll we'll make some adjustments of the filter depth here. So at the moment, if we turn this off, we can see that reaches quite far. Let's attach this to this one here. So this is LF05. You can see it's now attached to here. And it'll do nothing. Let's say the maximum that we want here is there. And we can consider that maybe sort of an ARP turn off button as well. So that's going to control filter depth. I'm going to bring these levels up a bit now. Let's use LFO6, let's just use the triangle and attach that to pan. And I'm going to set this to bipolar. Let's go to either side. I'm going to use the stereo feature here. So the stereo feature essentially adds two points that follow this shape, but slightly different times. And if you put it all the way to the right, you're going to get a nice stereo effect of it kind of going back and forth on each ear quickly. Just bring that down, down to two over one. You can see there's two points and they're gliding at different times. It kind of gives you a swirling around the head sort of feel, but without going a bit too in depth there, we're just going to do the halfway point. So in fact, we've already added the filter one cutoff here. So if I bring that down to there, we can adjust that position, which will adjust the depth. Perfect. I'm just going to bring that down on the level. And then that frees up this one that we've called filter depth to control this here into stereo. So now, take away our base. You can hear it's still straight down the middle with a little bit of panning that you can see from there, but that gives us two points that are playing on here, giving us even more of that sort of stereo beauty that we can get. And if you're struggling to see that, I'll just slow this down just for the sake of this, and you can see the two individual points playing. So essentially this one's playing on the right, this one on the left as it goes through. And we'll call that pan enhance. In fact, we'll just call it pan. That's even easier. And what we can do is attach this to this control as well. So let's attach. Don't know what I'm doing that. Let's attach that to that parameter. We can have it straight down the middle, or we can have more stereo detail. Okay, so let's add the bass back in. That's a little bit loud, so I'm going to bring that filter down. And 
finally, before we end this video, I just want to talk about importing audio samples into Vital and just the differences you're going to get between the three options that we get. We're not going to go into depth, but if you want to see this in a future tutorial, you can let me know in the comments because it would be interesting to see how many of you would want to do this. So I'm going to jump into my finder that I've already got open and you can see that I've got Big Tom selected or Tom Big here and this sounds like this. Let's take Big Tom over to Vital and you can see we have an option for wavetable, vocode and pitch splice. We're not going to talk about the differences with these particular modes but we can cover this in a future video if you want to see that but we're going to import one on each so each oscillator is going to be different here so wavetable for number one. I'm going to turn on the other two. Again, Big Tom for vocode, and finally, Pitch Splice. Now audibly and visually, you can see these have imported very differently. And that is the technical side that we're not going to get into, but we're going to talk about how they sound realistically as just playing it as a potential audible sample. And the reason that we're going into this is because the sampler is very basic at this moment. I'm sure it's going to expand into bigger and better things. But at this moment in time, this is one of the options that we have to get samples in and sort of usable in Vital. So here on our LFO, I'm going to make a upwards ramp. I'm going to set this to the frequency of one bar. And this is to move our frame positions here on each one. So I'm going to drag and drop these onto each one. So it's going to play from the beginning and through to the end. So let's listen to the first one. What does this sound like? And I'm on, I think, C1. You can hear there's a lot of artifacting in there, and that is not a good start, but we can fix that. You can use certain blend styles, phase styles. You'll probably have to import that into another wavetable editor just to smooth it out and get it sounding okay, but it's, it's there, the sound is there. It's there, but it's not usable straight off the bat. Let's have a look at the second one, which is vocode. So it seems to be like a little bit of a rubber band effect there. And it's very audible. And it's not really what I like the sound of. We could increase the frequency. And just turn smooth enough. But it's not really what I'm looking for. We could use it. It's got a more metallic sound. And you could use that as a bass quite easily. But the one that we're really going to look at is Pitch Splice and listen to how this sounds. So again, that has got depth and warmth to it. And it does, and it's closer to the original in my opinion. And that is the one that I would probably use audibly to import samples. And then you can start messing around with the frequency. So we could have this. Increase the ramp. And if you're struggling to visualize what I'm doing here, if I change this into an ADSR and actually change the orientation of this, so we now have a ramp down, for example, it's going to play it backwards. All we have to do is set the frame to the end and reverse the LFO. Let's just have, let's just have this down here so we can have attack, decay, you can see I've just created an attack, decay, sustain and release there. Very similar to how this works up here. So by doing this, we can have control over the sound. So if you was wanting to import them and you do want to see more on these videos about importing and using these samples to create presets, then we can do that. I'll give you a quick demonstration so maybe this is Big Tom's one here. If we double click that, we can see there we've got the Tom Big. And if I hold the key uh, up here, or maybe here, I've set this up so it works from the middle C point, I think. And you can hear that we can actually make some usable content through Vital. So if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. And there we have it, a cinematic preset in Vital. There's so many other options that we can go through, but that is a nice introductory level, I suppose, just creating a nice arpeggiated sequence with a pitch sliding bass. 
And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get to see all the new and latest upcoming videos. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.